everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be making the most extreme fireplace Santa coming down the chimney type of design. So it's got a brick background, which is so pretty. And I've done this type of a brick styling before, and I always enjoy it. It's very therapeutic to just kind of do this repetitive pattern, at least for me. But then there's a secret little slider mechanism, and you can switch out the scene that's happening behind the fireplace. So whether it's the little toasty fire or Santa coming down the chimney. There's also little magnetic pieces that you can take away or add in. It is just, there's so many interactive elements. I love it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future holiday themed designs as well. So I'm first going to go ahead and fit a form to my nail, but first I'm going to find something that is the right size to go for my C-curve. And I'm actually going to just use a brush cover. I found that to be just about the right size because I want to make sure that this nail is very, very straight sided and that it maintains that C-curve and a consistent one with parallel lines all the way down. And this is just the most easy way to ensure that completely, unless you do happen to have C-curve formers, which would be amazing if you do. So, you know, use those, get those out. Otherwise, use something that's a cylinder to make sure that your nail form is completely 100% straight. Now I'm going to take some clear acrylic and I'm going to start sculpting out the shapes of the base of my nail. So this is going to basically just be a square, a long square nail, kind of leaning towards a pipe nail. If you've ever seen a pipe nail, it isn't quite as tipped up as a pipe, but it is kind of, you know, leering in that direction. The one thing you're going to do, however, besides just sculpt this clear acrylic base all the way down is that you're going to leave a gap for where your fireplace opening is. So this is where I'm leaving this now. So I stopped right before the three mark on my nail form. And then I started again at about four and a half. You can leave whatever size fireplace you want. Just know that whatever space that you're leaving right here as, as like your fireplace window, that's a space that you're going to have to fill with whatever scene changes you're doing. So if you want to have enough space to paint or to sculpt Santa's, you know, legs, make sure that you leave yourself, you know, you can guess about the amount of space that you would need to fully do that or whatever space it is you're going to do. If you're using this concept and creating a different design, it'll be the same thing. Just make sure that you're leaving the right amount of space in your opening. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to be sculpting the background color of my nail. So I wanted this to look like a very soft brick, not like a red brick, but more of like a, a neutrally toned brick. I'm going to take a few shades of brown, kind of a light taupey color and then a medium chocolate brown. I'm going to use a double dipped bead of those two colors to swirl them on top of the nail and give me just a modeled background. I don't want necessarily very distinct swirls. I want it to just not be a solid color. These two colors that I'm using, it's actually three colors. It's two browns and then that taupe color. Whenever you're doing a double dip bead, regardless of what your colors are, make sure that you are going lightest to darkest as you are dipping your acrylic. So you put your brush in your monomer, first your liquid, then you go into the lightest color and then into the next lightest and then to the darkest color. If you're doing more than one or more than two colors, then you always, you know, you just progressively go darker. If you start with your darkest color and then you try to go to the lighter color, it's all going to end up looking the same. It's not going to be distinctive color zones. It's going to just be one dark color. So fill this in all the way. Same thing with that color layer you're going to leave that opening completely open try to sculpt it with as smooth as smooth edges as you possibly can because it is very hard to file inside that little window not impossible but you know the the easier you can make this on yourself the most limited amount of filing possible the better especially within the interior of the window after the color is on there i'm going to encapsulate this nail with a layer of clear acrylic so we've got like a clear acrylic sandwich that way it's going to be nice and strong. So the colors in the middle, there's clear acrylic underneath it and on top of it. This nail has a lot of weakness right around where this fireplace opening is because it is so narrow on the sides. And it would be one where, you know, it'd be easy to break, especially if you were going to say wear something like this. But having that little clear acrylic sandwich, like I said, with clear acrylic on the top and the bottom is going to add a lot of strength. I am going to now remove my nail form and carefully remove it because it does have that, that brush cover on the inside. So if you, as long as you didn't sculpt your nail past the halfway point around the circle, it should come out pretty easily. If you did sculpt your, your circle, your, or the C curve of your nail past the 50% point around that pipe or that that brush cover, you're going to lock it in place and then you're going to have it be stuck. So carefully, carefully make sure that you don't do that. Um, and then just go ahead and file this nail into shape. As long as it isn't over that halfway point, then it'll come out easily, but you won't have it be locked in there. So just, you know, 
be careful. Carefully file this nail because again, there is a very significant weak area in this design. So you don't wanna break it. I'm now going to use the same colors that I was using before as the base of my nail to sculpt my bricks. This time I'm going to make them a little bit lighter. So just the amount of time I spend in the light color versus the darker colors is going to be more heavily on the light color. I am then going to take a dotting tool that I dipped in acrylic powder and I'm going to carve my bricks. So sculpt a small section with another layer of your brick acrylic and then use the pointiest little dotting tool you have to carve those bricks. Then after you have one section done, you can go ahead and do a second section, trying to keep these lines nice and straight. Use the tip of your brush to create the top and bottom lines of each set of bricks and then carve them away just like you did with the first section on the next one. When you are carving bricks like I am, or you know, outlining them, separating them, you want to make sure that you alternate the placement of the lines. So you can either do this where it is every other. So you put a line in the middle of the space up from up above, or you can do it in thirds. Thirds actually looks a little bit more realistic when you kind of alternate them and split them up a little bit more. It does take a lot more brain process to make sure that you get them properly spaced that way. And the difference that it makes, I feel like is so minimal that in this design, it doesn't really matter. So just do the every other would be my, my recommendation for your own sanity. There's going to be a wreath on top of this and a bow and all of these other details that the brick spacing can be a little bit rudimentary. I'm going to do the next section all the way down in that big bulk area of the bricks. I am doing them in two rows at a time. I feel like that's the best spacing for me to make sure that I am able to carve the bricks in and not be wasting time either. The more you do at a time, the faster the process is, the more efficient it is. However, if you can't carve your bricks in and you have to remove something, that's not very efficient either. So I thought for me, the two, two was a really good, a really good tempo. I am not going to continue carving my bricks all the way down to the very top of that opening of the fireplace. I'm going to leave the last row blank. I'm going to do the full side of the bricks all the way down on the left and the right of the opening. So there's the one side and then I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Not trying to add like the little separations, the vertical lines for the bricks, just horizontal on those side pieces. And then after I have it to this point, I'm going to do some across the bottom. What you do have to remember is that you have to input magnets. Any place that you wanna have a piece that is removable and replaceable, you need to put in a magnet. So any spot where you're like, oh, I could have a present that sits here sometimes, then you need to get the magnet in place. I forgot to put my magnet in because, you know, sometimes your brain is just really into sculpting some bricks. And so I'm going to swipe away the bottom corner brick that I have, and that's where my magnet's going to be. So I'm going to press that in right now. So I added a little bit of acrylic, grab my magnet, add a little bit of acrylic again since I dropped my magnet. And then once I can finally get that one to stay put, then I'm going to cover it with the same colors I've been using for the bricks all along, just so that my magnet can't go anywhere. As I'm doing this, I don't really wanna completely cover it where you can't see it because the more coverage on top of the magnet, the less strength that it has. So it's a balance between masking it so that you don't see it and not covering it up so completely that it no longer has any strength. I'm going to place another magnet on the, the top of the mantle or all the way on one side of the mantle and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my mantle. This time I'm sculpting just a single brick at a time. These are much thicker. That gives you kind of that like top of the fireplace look and also plenty of space for the magnet to be embedded in those bricks. So there's the one on the left and the one on the right. I'm going to cover them ever so slightly and then add the final brick in the center. They're also a little bit, just a little bit bulkier, a little bit bigger all, all the way around. Once you have all of these bricks sculpted, give yourself a pat on the back because this was a lot, this was a lot to do. And now we can add some of the fun stuff. I'm going to take a narrow straw that has about the same curvature as the inside of those skinny little pieces on the left and right of my fireplace. I'm going to carve approximately halfway around my straw in about the length that is the size, the height of the opening plus a bit. And I'm going to do one for each side. So here's the first one and then I'm going to do the second one. Carve them like I I said approximately halfway around the straw it doesn't have to be exact but you just want to make sure that it is around the straw enough to create nice little grips on the side to make that slider piece so once you have the one done and the other done set the straw to the side 
as those are curing just so that they don't get bumped or anything. They don't have to be perfect. I'm going to cut a section of the straw off the other side and I'm going to cut it in half or the closest thing I can to cutting it in half to create two little boats. I'm going to fill each of my boats twice. So here is just the process of filling them clear acrylic inside continue that all the way down. You want these little slider half cylinder pieces to be about the same length or a little bit longer than those half circle ones that you sculpted on the outside of the straw. And remove those from the outside of the straw and attach them. So you have four pieces that fit on the inside of the straw and two pieces that fit on the outside of the straw. Attach the outside of the straw pieces to the interior of the fireplace skinny walls. I know this is a lot to think about. Once you see how it works, I think it'll make sense. Now I'm going to just let those sit there. I'm not going to mess with them too much. I'm just going to let them cure and kind of leave them alone. While I'm waiting for them, I'm going to wrap my fireplace very tightly with a piece of aluminum foil. And then after I have it wrapped, I'm going to place a magnet on top of the ones that are in the mantle. So there's the two of them, one on the left and the right. And then I'm going to be sculpting some stockings. So my little brain concept as for how this story plays out is that there's the fire, then Santa comes down the chimney, he places the stockings, he places the present, and then he can go go back up the chimney. So I've got the little stockings that he can either can be there or not, depending on whether he has visited yet, as well as the present. So I'm going to sculpt my two stockings. I'm using kind of a darker shade of red, not a very bright red, but more of a burgundy for my stockings. Sculpting a very basic uh, stocking sock shape. And after I have just a very simple shape done for those, I'm going to be adding um, the whites on the top. I don't want them to be too exaggerated. There are so many details in this design. There's so much going on that each of them can remain fairly simple, which is kind of the beauty of a design that's this complicated is that yes, everything is very complicated. There's lots going on, but the individual elements can remain a little more simple. You know, they don't have to have stitching detail on a stocking like I would normally do. You can, you can kind of pick and choose what details you want to go over the top with. I'm going to make sure the bottom of this is wrapped with the foil as well as I kind of didn't make a big enough piece of foil in the beginning. Add a magnet on top of the one that is in the corner, the bottom corner for my present. I'm going to use a different shade of red to sculpt my present just so that it's not all exactly the same. If you don't have this many varieties of say the shade of red, then you can definitely just do the same color or you could detail them or change them later with acrylic paint, but still sculpt them the same at this point. I'm going to take a nice green and I'm going to add a ribbon going around my gift. I always like to do that on presents. I love the way an exaggerated bow and just the whole look of a present it's got the ribbon wrapped around it. I do want to mention though that I personally never actually wrap presents this way. I would love to, but I have cats that think that ribbons are so tasty and they would unwrap everything even quicker if I did try to actually make my presents look beautiful. So in my house, they look like a three-year-old wrapped them because they've been wrapped and rewrapped thanks to the cats. I'm going to, after that's all cured, I'm going to remove it from the aluminum foil and just test them just to see how they look. I love when you can, you know, kind of get a glimpse of your final product. I'm going to sculpt a wreath on an old front backing. I'm using the same shade of green that I used to make my gift or the ribbon on the gift. I'm going to make a vague circle and then kind of mess up the circle with a dotting tool, just stab at it, make the hole in the middle like a donut. And then before it's fully cured, but when it's getting close, but it's still a little bit malleable, pick it up and place it wherever you want it on the nail as far as like within the space above the mantle. I'm going to add a little clear acrylic underneath it to really secure it in place. And now again on a nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting my bow. I love baking three-dimensional bows and there's no better excuse to do so than Christmas. So I've got my red making a petal shape or like an eye shape. I'm going to do the first side and then go ahead and do the second side. This red acrylic that I have is one that stays very wet and sticky longer than most because it does have so much pigment in it. So I I kind of have to putz with it a little bit more than normal, but keep, keep working on it. Just wait. If your acrylic's not cooperating, give it another, you know, 30 seconds or a minute and test it again. I've got the two sides of my bow, and then I'm going to be adding the little ribbons that go down. So I'm going to just pat those out, press them from side to side, make a little V shape on the bottom, press them out. Hopefully, um, your acrylic in general is being cooperative with you when you're working on this type of a project. So while those ribbons are still malleable, just like I kind of said with the wreath, pick them up and place them down so that they kind of have a bit of a wave to them. So they're not just sticking straight down flat, that they have a bit more of a shape. Mine, again, this acrylic is a little stickier than most of mine. So it was being a little more 
difficult. Hopefully yours cooperates a bit better than mine was, but you should be able to get them in place after you have both ribbons on there. I'm going to attach the sides of my, the, like the looped parts of this bow. Those at this point, since you did them first, should be a little bit more firm, which is good so you can pick them up easily and set them down on the nail. Add a little bit more of your red acrylic to the center for where the knot would be. And then your bow is done. If you want an in-depth um, tutorial on making bows, I do have a whole live class dedicated to bows, different products that you can make a bow with, different techniques. And I could put a link to that in the description box below. Bow making is something that if you are interested in 3D nail art, it is a great practice to do just because it does include many different techniques from making a certain shape, making two shapes that are the same size and to know when to pick up acrylic and when to move it just in the different stages. So if you've never made a bow and you're looking to enhance your acrylic skills, it's just a great one to practice with. And I can put a link to that video below. I'm making two little candlesticks. This actually wasn't on my agenda when I started this design, but I just felt like right in the center of the mantle, there needed to be something more. So I'm going to place those two candlesticks right in the middle. And I am so happy with the way that they just improved the overall balance of this, of this nail. So I've got those two little candlesticks. And now after we have those candlesticks attached, all of the extra 3D elements are on this nail, the permanent ones. I'm going to go back to a nail form backing, a clean one, and I'm going to sculpt two incredibly thin, large rectangles of clear acrylic. When I say large, I just mean that they should be bigger than what you need. And what you need them to do is fill in the space behind the fireplace. After they are cured, they should be thin enough where you can trim them with a manicure scissors, even an old rusty one like I'm using. Trim them so that they fit within the slider bars that you have created. And it takes a lot of trimming, but you don't want to trim them too much right off the bat so that they are too small. You want them to fit and they should just fit in there really nicely. Once they slide in, then you're going to grab, you have those little cylinders that you sculpted on the inside of the straws and the boats, as I call them. You take two of your little cylinders, you're going, your half cylinders, and place them inside the tracks so that their flat surface is up. Then you're going to slide that thin, that thin clear acrylic piece in. After you have it where everything is placed, it looks even, everything is in exactly how you would want it. You just have a clear piece behind your window, go to the back side, and you're going to attach the slider bars to your clear flat piece. So you've got the tracks, the sliders, and your, your flat piece that's like your canvas. So I kind of think of it as like a sleigh. You know, you've got like the little sleigh sliders, and then you've got the tracks that they fit in. After those are attached, you'll be able to slide this piece out from behind the nail, and then you can add a very, very thin layer of black acrylic on top of it to be your background color. If you are worried about adding too much thickness to these designs and you don't want to do all of this with acrylic, you can do it with gel polish or gel paint or acrylic paint instead. The one thing that you can think about is because this nail has that beautiful, strong curve in it, that C curve, there is space in the middle. So it doesn't fit all the way up to this, you know, to the very top of the fireplace, there's a gap. So for instance, right now I'm sculpting these logs for my fire. They'll fit just fine on the inside. It's the edges that you really have to keep nice and thin. So if you're sculpting this and you're worried about those edges, maybe do the background with gel. However, my acrylic, I was able to apply so thinly. It didn't really add any, any extra thickness that was a problem. But if it is, you can always file it a little bit too, to remove anything extra with so I've got brown for my logs and then with yellow and orange I'm going to be adding the flames of my fire I am using a kind of a sparkly yellow color I feel like that really adds to the appearance of it being kind of that dancing flame look it does seem like there is a lot of extra space above my flames that is just black space I will be adding a little bit of a smoke look to that later with paint just for now I'm just going to be sculpting the flames and after you have each of these little details sculpted if you wanted to just double check that it fit before you continued on you could if you wanted to if you are a little worried about that on my Santa leg slider bar, I'm going to sculpt the same logs or try to sculpt basically the same logs at the bottom of it. So I've got the first log and then the second log, but I'm not going to do the flames this time. So I'm just gonna do the logs like they are burnt out and I'm going to then sculpt my little Santa legs coming down. If you want another thing that would be cute is if you made this longer with longer slider bars, a longer piece, you would be able to have it so like maybe the whole Santa was there. And as you pulled it down and pulled it through, just more of him became visible. That would be another option if you wanted to take it a little bit farther. 
So I've got the Santa legs. Now I'm going to be adding the other log going on top. Unfortunately, like his boots that are supposed to be black or should be black do not show up as much as I would probably prefer them to in this in this design. But I did take and I did outline those and add a little bit more detail to them so that they're easier to see with acrylic paint. But right now as I'm sculpting them, they're just black on top of black. So you can't see a whole lot of what is going on with the shoes. So there's the first one and the second one. The other thing to add to this is going to be the white fur trim on Santa's outfit. I, even though I said that you don't have to be super worried about the thickness, just do try to be cognizant of how thick you are sculpting stuff. This is a low profile sculpt. This isn't a super three dimensional. If you've ever done a 3D encapsulated design where you sculpt something and then apply clear acrylic over the top of it. So whatever you're sculpting like a flower might be embedded inside the nail do a similar type concept with this. So, you know, that same style of flat sculpting is kind of what you're going for. The 3D is still there. The color is still there. It's just not as thick as it could be. Once that is all done, now you can do the fun part of doing the final detailing. Whenever I get to this stage, it is always such a, I don't want to say a relief, but it is such a, a wonderful feeling of accomplishment because you're at the end. You've got the last final stages of your project to work on. You get to see how it all comes together. I'm going to add some red highlighting to my bow, to the present, and to the stockings just a little bit. All of this stuff is, I'm going to say, unnecessary. It's just like the icing on top. You wouldn't have to do all of these if you didn't want to. I'm also going to do that to my Santa. It really does seem to be the most important though on Santa's legs just because the dark color from the black beneath the red acrylic does seem to be making the red a little less vivid. So to make sure that he's really visible, adding some red just to brighten that up does seem to make a big difference. With white paint, I'm going to be highlighting his shoes, his fur trim, and I'm going to go back to the main nail. I'm going to be adding some highlights on top of the fur trim on the stockings as well, just because a lot of times the red acrylic will have a little bit of a pink hue that gets onto your white when it's white and red next to each other. I'm going to add the drips on my candles to make it look like they have been melting. With black, I'll add their wicks and then some outlines anywhere that I feel like I want them. Maybe a little on the bow, maybe a little bit on the present. I am going to just, I'm trying to keep the whole thing simple, even though I might be saying that and it might sound ridiculous because there's so many details going on, but I'm just really minimizing the amount of extra details that I could possibly think about adding it. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on my flames to brighten up the very tips. And then with diluted white and swooshy lines, I'm going to be adding my smoke. Then I'm going to dip my brush in some gel top coat and then dip it into multicolored caviar beads and use those to add ornaments to my wreath. I have never done this particular technique before and it actually worked pretty well. I'm going to apply some matte top coat over the various pieces that I don't want to be shiny. And then that's it. So I added some, it was 3D glaze over the bow and then matte top coat over everything else. And then once that's all dry, you can see how it all comes together. I just love how interactive this design can be. I love all the details that are in it. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like a showpiece. It wouldn't be something that you would wear. It wouldn't be practical to actually, you know, have on your hand, but it is so much fun to create and think about and then just to see it all come to life. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. I have so many ideas for using this concept and this technique in for different holidays maybe, or just different designs altogether. I hope you guys are as excited about this new technique as much as I am, and I will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>